All right, guys. So uh, while making boring videos, I figured I'd make some more boring videos. Um, recently, I picked up some new screwdrivers. These are not them, actually. These are the ones I've been using. Um, really nice screwdrivers. These, um, they're Philo Ergonic series. They have a hex shaft with a, a wrench area to grab on if you need to apply more torque. They're made in Germany. They've got a black coated tip, hardened. Uh, this is the number two Phillips. Um, they normally have an indicator on the back, uh, but they wear off, which is annoying because they're expensive. But you can see this is a, a slotted screwdriver here. Um, this is the Phillips, so that's gone. I use this, this driver a lot, actually. As you can see by the tip, uh, you actually may not be able to see that. But anyway, um, not bad, but uh, recently, and, and mind you, I have the uh, insulated ones I use a lot for uh, working on live circuits or um, areas that I could short stuff out, specifically on DC circuits on my car. Um, when moving connectors and whatnot, it's just easier to move them, but I'm worried always about uh, bridging to contacts and messing expensive electronics up. I also have the Philo micro drivers. Um, they're hard plastic. Actually, they're, they're not. They're hard plastic on the red, and they're, they're a soft coating. These are super soft and squishy, and they're awesome. But it was starting to annoy me, and I'll show you more about that in a second as to why I uh, picked up another set. I was going to actually pick up another set of Philos in a hard finish, but or I'm sorry, Vera. But um, I ended up going with uh, the Weha, or Viha. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But um, I grabbed these guys because... I used their um, stubby set with a soft finish, and it it really, although it's not as um, compliant as the uh, the Philo, it felt a lot better in my hand. Um, and one cool thing about them, um, having used these stubbies a lot, I have a, a couple screws in the back of my car along the rear window, and you can't get a screwdriver in there unless it's a stubby. And I've had stubbies before, obviously, but I decided to pick up a nice pair, or a nice set, and um, I ended up really liking these, these ones. So, um, anyway, I'm going to take a couple out, and I'm going to show you some differences between the Weha and the uh, Philo, and um, give you an explanation as to why I bothered picking up an additional set. Alright, so, here are two number two Phillips. Okay, they're both called 100 millimeters, but you'll see obviously the, the Viha is longer, uh, no, matter about, no matter where you measure from. So if you measure from the base here, um, let me see if I can turn these. You may not be able to tell because of the angle, but the, the Viha is, is about a quarter inch longer, six millimeters longer, maybe more, maybe 10, if you measure it like that. If you measure the shank or the, uh, the flare, you're still not the same length. This guy's still longer. Um, not a big deal, but I like this screwdriver and I constantly need a long one. And it's annoying. The, the Philo is not, I don't know where they're measuring 100 millimeters. It, it's not here. This is 100 millimeters. This is like 90. But not a big deal. That's nitpicking. Uh, more annoying to me is the fact that, and this is a, this is a new screwdriver, relatively. And I don't know if you can see that. But I don't abuse my tools, and the filo is ever so slightly, especially on that tip there, camming and uh, wearing. So this tip here, the side that's up right now, this guy, is relatively sharp and straight. See. If I turn it 180 degrees, that one, it's starting to, you can see there, it's starting to wear curved like. Um, to me, that implies the tips are soft. You can see, I'll take a picture. You can see some wear on these, and, and the annoying part is, I don't abuse my stuff, and I don't use it how you shouldn't and go for like crazy torque on this. I've never put a wrench around the shaft on this guy and this guy's already starting to uh, to wear. Um, more annoying than that is if you take this uh, this nice foam squishy handle 
I mean, I'll be honest, this handle is really nice. Um, it's soft and it allows you to really grab it and not hurt your hand at all. And you can apply some serious torque and maybe that's what kills it, I don't know. Like maybe I, I don't feel like I'm grabbing it too hard, but I am. But uh, either way, what's annoying is I do a lot of bead blasting in this garage. Um, and if I take like some dust and grit and get it on here, I usually grab some simple green on my rag, and this is a little damp from cleaning up, and wipe my tools down when I'm done. And when I do that, I get it clean, like it's, it's the colors clean, but you cannot get the grit off this. It's like, it's, this, it's like gritty. And the only way I found to get rid of it was to actually fill a bucket up with soapy water and wash the damn tool. <laughs> and it's really frustrating. I mean, it sounds so petty, but imagine you dunk this like, you know, back in this, in this lathe and you get little shards of metal on it or anything gritty and this rubber texture, I mean, I don't know if you can tell how gritty, how pressure or how soft this is, but it's, it's really squishy and that's nice, but it freaking drives me nuts because I can't get it clean. And so when you work on it, and you know, especially I have a, I have a car that I've restored a lot of uh, the interior and I'm really picky about using dirty tools in the, in the car because you know, you have grease or something on the tool and you end up grabbing the steering wheel, which is brand new from BMW. It's like a $500 steering wheel and you grab it and you get a, you get a grease mark on the, on the leather of the steering wheel. It drives me nuts. So that really pisses me off. And the only way I found to clean them is to literally dunk the tool in water. Um, I've hosed it down with Simple Green. I, I've used uh, WD-40. I've used anything, anytime you have a rag and you're wiping it, all it does is like displace the grit. And I'll show you, uh, well, yeah, let me see if I can show you exactly. All right, so I went and uh, grabbed some dirty tools over there by the blaster and uh, then grabbed this screwdriver. So you can see it's got some glass bead all over it and whatever. Um, so what I traditionally do is simply squirt it down a little bit, take my microfiber rag, which holds a lot of dirt, but this one's relatively clean, and I just take it and I wipe it down. And I do this with all my wrenches when I'm done a project, I do it with all my screwdrivers. And so what you end up with is a clean looking screwdriver, right? But I don't know if this is going to even come up and you guys might think I'm just an idiot. But watch for the reflectiveness. See the little glitter? If you can see that glitter, that's glass beads still in there. So we'll wipe it again. All right, so I'm really, I'm like genuinely trying to clean this up. And it's still there. It's not supposed to be. So here's, let me see if I can grab one out of here that's, that's, that I've cleaned. See, there's no uh, very minimal sparkle to that compared to that guy. And again, when you, I, I would wipe it down and I would go, I'm done my project and, and I go onward and I'm working inside the car now or, or whatever, or maybe I'm done for the day. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, I go and pick this up and it feels like it's got sand on it. And it's just, it's really annoying. And I, I got so fed up with it. I washed them in a bucket. I got all the dirt. I'm actually have to wash this again. I got all the, uh, the, the, the dirt and whatnot off of them. The grease cleans up nice, as does the paint on the end. Uh, this one you can see used to have the paint on the end, which would indicate that this was a number one Phillips, but that wore off. And I don't strike the ends or anything like that. They're not, they're not nicked up. It's just from wiping it down. Uh, this has no paint whatsoever. Not a big deal because it's pretty obvious what it is, and it does indicate right here. But um, so anyway, I decided that I would switch up and pick up some some Weehaws. Um, this is also a number two. And the tip, this is used, this, I've used this a bunch now. 
the tip is way nicer. The shaft is longer. Um, it has a better anti-roll. It has a it has a larger flat. Um, oops, sorry about that. You can see here um, the flat on this guy is quite uh, deep right here, and that keeps it from rolling around. So if you were to you know throw it, it'll find its way flat. This guy, whoop, not quite so. I mean, it, it, it stops rolling because it's got a hexagonal body, but it's it's a little bit, you know, smaller of a, a flat. Not a big deal, but nonetheless. Um, but the biggest part about it is this is the, the Viha soft finish, okay? So when you get dirt on this, and you take your, your cleaner, and you take a rag... And wipe them down. This is almost still slippery. I mean, it is cleaner than ever. There's no grit on it. There's nothing. It's like super clean. Um, it's a hard plastic with a rubber on it versus a soft rubber. And I think the problem is this soft rubber is so sticky that you can't get. I mean, just rolling on the table, I got dirt on it again, and I cleaned the heck out of it. Um, which is annoying because I'm, I'm going to have to go with them. So I've relegated the ergonic ones, the Philos, to uh, be kind of like my clean tools. Like, if I know I'm just working on electronics and I'm not going to be torquing screws and stuff by like anything that's super gritty, then I'll use them. Uh, the tips are annoying because they're a little softer, but especially for like, I think, God, I must have paid like $80 for that set of screwdrivers. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So these will be relegated as kind of like my indoor or clean tools, and these are more of like my general purpose use everywhere. We actually use these at work. I don't I don't work with screwdrivers during the day necessarily, but um, we stock our fabrication floor with Wias, and that's what gave me the idea of like, hey, these must be pretty good because we're ISO 9001 or AS9100, and we're using these guys, not these guys. So they're about the same price, and they're about as available. So I. Uh, I decided, you know what, let me try them out, and I, I grabbed some from the floor and was using them on a project, and they worked great. So, anyway, I'm going to just go through the catalog of parts I have now, and I'll uh, put an end to this long, lengthy uh, video. Long, lengthy. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put these, uh, these drivers back. Um, I'll probably just use this as is for now. I'll clean it up later. These are all clean. You can almost tell the difference. I don't know if you can in the camera, but this guy's still got a little bit of whitey, whitish gray on him, and, and this guy's smooth as can be. Um, really annoying. <laughs> they feel great, and they work great. It's just really annoying that they, uh, they don't clean up well. So I had to pick up the, um, or not didn't have to. I, I picked up the uh, eight-piece set. I think it was an 8-piece, maybe it was a 12, I, I don't remember. It was a big kit from uh, Amazon, and it came with all these guys, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It was a 12-piece, I think, So because it came with two, uh, two stubbies. Um, they come with awesome, awesome uh, flatheads. I mean, this is huge. They're calling it a 10-millimeter blade, and it's just gigantic. The uh, Philo kit doesn't come with that at all. The largest uh, flathead this guy comes with is like a six, I think? Six and a half. So comparably larger. I mean, that's like night and day. Um, about the same price. I bought all of my flatheads and Phillips in a kit. These are Torx on the Philos. Um, these are minis and these are insulated Phillips and flats. Um, this kit came with the 10, I think this is a, an 8, a 6.5, a 5.5, a 4.5, a, four and a three, uh, flathead. So all those guys there. It also came with a number 3 Phillips with 150 millimeter length. I don't use number 3s very often, but that's a good size to have, especially when you're doing like homework. Uh, number 2 I use a ton and number one as well. And it also came with a 60 or a, a PHO, a zero, 
Um, and then it came with a small number one and I think a small four stubby. I also picked up this kit here. This was not cheap, but I needed it for a very specific project most recently. Um, this is a torque set with the uh, Pico finish, so it's kind of similar to the soft finish. Um, this is a number four Torx, okay, commonly used in cell phones and stuff, but it goes all the way down to a T0. Yeah, T1, sorry, a T1, which is like insanely small. I mean, I can't even see that it has a torque shape. But anyway, again, this kit was not cheap. It's a T1 through T8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep, T8. I needed a T2 and a T4 uh, for a project. So rather than buy them piecemeal for like 18 bucks, I figured I'd get the whole set of T1 through T8 for about 50 Kind of expensive, but at the same time, I now have all the torque sizes I could possibly need between the uh, Weehaz and the uh, Philo uh, up here. Um, I also have a lot of Torx sockets. Um, this is my, my toolbox, my main toolbox here. I do have a lot of Torx uh, sockets here. Um, they go down, I do have down to Oh man, what size is this one? I think it's uh, this is a T10. So I have down the T10 in a quarter inch socket. Um, I don't believe I have much more than that. I have I have inverted torques or external torques down here. But um, so anyway, I needed uh, I needed the T1 for a project. So anyway, super super boring video, especially if you hate tools. But uh, that's all I got for you today. Um, yeah, so. That's it.